numbers of Shadow Garden explained new Lambda Kai and Omega explained by Anime Room Pi. Let's see what he has to say. The Eminence in Shadow is a very interesting isekai series that is filled with some very well-written and compelling characters despite its more comedic and sarcastic aspect. Okay. And since I cover most of the characters- Hashtag ad, that's a lot of you. I think we've seen pretty much like every one of them. There's some light novel content, like, like who is Zeta? And like, I, I, there there are some content I want to watch, but it's like light novel content, so I don't want to spoil myself. But I have been covering Anime Room Pie co quite a lot recently. The series, I just wanted to wrap up the rest of the members found in the Shadow Garden organization. That's why in today's video, we'll be going over the remaining members of Shadow Garden, mainly the name numbers, like some of their powers and abilities. That but the named ones are from 8 to 25, right? So there's more than four, but we just don't see all of them. How does that work? Are those even name spots even all occupied? Because these are the main name numbers that we see, but it's 8 to 25, right? Character backstory, as well as their role within the organization itself. It goes without saying that will be spoilers for the Eminence in Shadow, so here's a spoiler. How much spoilers though? Are you telling me it's light novel spoilers or what? Warning, just in case. Also, if you enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and share with your friends. I really appreciate it. I'm kind of getting scared now. The moment that we get spoilers, we're going to immediately fucking skip. Appreciate it. Before we begin, what are the name numbers? There are a subgroup of Shadow Garden members. 1 to 7, the main shades, the pillars of Shadow Garden, directly gifted the powers from Shadow. 8 to 25, recognized members by shadow or the name numbers or they defeated somebody when they defeated like a, a double digit number that's how you get into the name number there's like qualification rules and then 26 to like 666 these are all unnamed numbers and now they have to like prove themselves and try to get into the upper branch i think oriana and her group 664 665 i hope you know they actually make it there. Belonging to the numbers, and they are considered the strongest among the numbers, having been acknowledged by the Seven Shadows for their exceptional talents, abilities, and strength. Also, they aren't referred to by the number. Instead, they are all given titles. I love how you can't really tell who's behind these, you know, these these ones. Except, I guess Alpha, because the long blonde hair. But then you have Delta here. <laughs> I love Delta's pose here the most. It's very chill, uh, and even like little fan service here too. Delta, I'm starting to realize, might be one of the best girls. Straight up, the most recent arc, this is getting off topic, but like the whole arc with John Smith, this is a Delta arc. This was a fucking Delta arc, and the fact that someone also made a comment about how Delta is the closest to Shadow now. It's not even Alpha that's the closest. Delta straight up knows all about sh like Sid's shenanigans. Because Sid can like trust her because she's just a fucking like dog girl, right? Like what does she know? She's just chilling. I think she is actually the closest to Shadow right now. If you consider all the relationships the Shades have, with Shadow. It is based on the Greek alphabet ranging from the letters 8 to 24, similar to the 7 Shadows. As for what the name numbers do within Shadow Garden, they normally supervise and organize the numbers below them or they are involved in the management of the various branches of Shadow Garden. Nui is just like Gamma's personal assistant, right? And Kai and Omega just like our lab assistant. They just do whatever the fuck you want. They'll like be like rowing boats. They'll be like on the bicycle trying to power it up for like the, the Monday Man Mass. They're just they're just helpers. But often they are simply assigned to become the direct subordinates of the Seven Shadows. Currently, the only known name numbers are Lambda, mm -hmm. Nu, Kai, and Omega. So yeah. having said that, let's get to the main topic. Of and I think a lot of this, this might be spoilers, this might not be spoilers, but I think it's pretty much heavily implied. Like everybody knows a new member is about to show. I, I forget the exactly her numerics, right? But we've seen her in the trailer. I think her name is Victoria. Her, it's going to be her arc. You know, it's the girl that's with Zeta right now. She's going to be the next like name number, right? So that's going to show up. You got a video? Burger rapper, no! Evil. Evil. Wow! I did not know! You see that? Nami and 665 and 664. They were always there. They were always there. That's crazy. She's not a name number? Oh, never mind. Oh, I thought she was. But goddamn, they were, they were always there. And she's still eating and doing the thing. What is... What is, we need to get more lore on these two characters. I need to know more about them. Why are they always together? Why is she always eating? Why is she always so bossy? Now, starting with Lambda, she used to be a soldier from the Valgata Empire, but after showing symptoms of demon possession, Jesus. she was captured by the cult to be experimented upon in their research facility. Luckily, she would eventually be saved by the Seven Shadows when they raided the research facility. After finding her, Epsilon would cure her demon possession, and Ooh. following that, Lambda had learned the truth. Epsilon can cure possession? I thought Shadow is the only one that can cure the mana overload. But I guess with the powers granted onto the Shades, they can also cure. I 
did not know. Behind the couch, so she decided to join Shadow Garden. She would then receive the number of 11, but later she earned the title of Lambda, becoming a name number. As for what Lambda did after joining Shadow Garden, when they moved their base to the lost city of Alexandria, she briefly helped Ita with the reconstruction of their new base and developing I thought she's just like drill sergeant. She's just there to just... Alpha and Epsilon are the only one that can cure possession? Is it light novel? Is it spoilers on why they can do that? That's kind of really cool. Then again, those two are known as the ones that can control... Like, Epsilon is like the best one at controlling magic. I'm sure that kind of goes into how you can manage mana overload in people, right? ...a new defense system because of her experience as a soldier, but her main role is to serve as the drill instructor of drill Shadow Sergeant. Garden, responsible for teaching new recruits while also utilizing her knowledge on military... She's just there to fucking yell at the waifus, strip them naked, and just build them back up. ...procedures and practices to improve the discipline and overall standard of the numbers. However, her initial teaching methods had caused a huge decline in the effectiveness and efficiency of many recruits, even reducing- Oh, wait, wait, this is reincarnated as a slime, I just realized. Another series that we're gonna get started pretty soon. ...the morale of the organization because it was too demanding and punishing. Luckily, thanks to advice from Alpha and Epsilon, she was able to quickly improve her teaching. Alpha cured Alexia's inmate in season 1. That is right, episode 5, season 1, in the I'm Atomic moment, when Iris was fighting that big monster. I didn't realize that Alpha cured there. She, she did. I thought she just used her own attack of like little mini I'm Atomic and just like disintegrated the girl. But then the, I mean, we, we returned her back to the human form. So you're right. That, that is curing. That's like one of the first times we saw that. That's kind of crazy. Teaching method, taking a more balanced approach by combining proper discipline with encouragement and focus on improving not just their physical. Encouragement? She encouraged, I mean, the only thing we've seen from her is just like fucking shame Oriana and strip her naked and cut her burger wrapper, so I'm a little, I'm a little hurt by her. It's a good capabilities, but their mental strength as well. Lambda is definitely a very important asset to Shadow Garden, and thanks to her, the overall she strength of them. all the numbers within yeah. the organization has greatly improved, and anyone that completed their training can easily outclass the average Dark Knight from the Night Order. And other than being a valuable instructor, another major contribution that Lambda made was introducing the three-person party, which helped to develop what? the organizational strength of Shadow Garden. The three-man party system. Essentially, she... Aurea... I... Are they always in trios? Huh. What a, what a random thing. What, what a random fact, but th that is right. They, they are in trios. All the party missions, have they always been in trios? Huh. Huh. Introduced this framework to help promote teamwork by pairing numbers that can compensate for the weaknesses while also utilizing the strength of their fellow party members. It even increased their survival rate which helped to address Lambda's original concern. Has anyone died? Of our Shadow Garden members, has anyone died? Also, this, this, cur this graph right here, <laughs> it looks like an exponential graph of people dying. I don't know, something, there is no label to Y and X axis, but when you look at this graph and you see a skull right here and you see the bar go up, it looks like the amount of people dying, but I don't think people actually die. No, I don't, I don't think so. The three-person system also greatly improved the training efficiency and combat effectiveness of all the numbers as well, John Smith. allowing them to handle stronger or more dangerous opponents. That said, regarding Lambda's overall strength, not much is known, but she was personally trained by Alpha, so her combat capability and she uses like a glowing red whip, okay. These are likely quite high. She is a name number after all. Yeah, why does she have her eyes closed here? You know, like that one time, like the Lambda right eye secret. There's a secret to it. She's not just being chuny. You know that one episode in, uh, in season one where Shadow was like, we, we were in like the, um, what was it? it? It was against the Cult of Diablos. It was like in the research lab. It was the Aurora arc. Remember that shit where Sid had his eyes closed the entire time? And he's like, oh, I'm like, Hiding my powers, right? That's that's a chuny shit. Is that what Lambda's doing here too, huh? Is that what she's doing? She is a name number after all. Additionally, Lambda is very skilled with military strategies and tactics, often serving as a military advisor for the Seven Shadows, especially Alpha. For instance, she once used her knowledge on the Oriana Kingdom to prepare Epsilon for a debut as the Pianist Chiron, even what? training her in the proper etiquette of human nobles and the culture of the Oriana Kingdom. In oh, this is some mobile game stuff, right? I recognize the mobile game art here. But Epsilon was like debuting as like a proper, like a, like a professional piano player. And they were all, oh, that, see, this is the stuff that I wanted to play in a mobile game for, to get extra context and like different, like little side stories that deepen like, you know, 
I don't know, your, your, your like understanding of the Shadow Garden. And the culture of the Oriana Kingdom. That's pretty cool. In any case, we do briefly see Lambda in the anime when Alpha asked her to train Rose Oriana. And if you want to know more about her training, I recommend checking out my previous video on Rose. We will probably watch this one too. Anyways, even though Lambda has been shown oh. to be quite stringent and harsh towards the new recruits, deep down she is actually quite compassionate and caring. She is strict because she just wants to make sure everyone can survive, and all she wants is to simply provide. I closed again. I'm starting to realize this eye has constantly been closed. Even when she's cutting up the fucking burger wrappers from Oriana. Find the numbers from experiencing the same burden and trauma that she had to suffer through previously as a soldier, which honestly makes her such a compelling and respectable character. Hopefully her story will be expanded wait a or more in the it, future. It, it, wait, 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 wait. Explain that logic one more time about why she is so mean. Experiencing the same... Hold up, down. hold she's up, actually, hold up. She's strict because she just... She is she's actually quite compassionate, but she's really strict because... ...wants to make sure everyone can survive, and all she wants is to simply prevent the numbers from experiencing the same burden and trauma that she had to suffer through previously as a soldier, which honestly makes... Okay, 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 that makes a lot more sense. Okay, okay, she's like, she's being very strict and harsh because she doesn't want anyone to die. That, makes, that actually makes a lot of sense. That actually makes a lot of sense. such a compelling and respectable character. Peace out, Hopefully her story will be expanded upon more in the future. But what are your thoughts on Lambda? I would love to read your opinions on her character overall. Damn! I forgot she was that cold in season one. Oh my goodness, I, I remember that scene. Next, let's talk about New. And before she joined Shadow Garden, her name was. Is it New or New? -E? I thought there was like an E at the end. Nicoletta Marquez. She came from a noble family that was famous for producing Dark Knights that specializes in espionage and interrogation. She is said to have a promising future, having just enrolled at the Midgar Royal Spousal Academy. And she also has a fiance. I'm not sure like how important it is, but there is that one character. That character survived actually in season one while the other partner died. It was Iris's main Black Knight, right? One of them is like, and he, he, he has a different style too. He has like a red cape or something and blue hair, but it's like a fiance. It was like briefly mentioned in the Sherry Barnett arc, but it was like very, it was like glossed over. I'm not sure how important that character is or how important their relationship is, but it's interesting that they, they like, let us know that, oh, she has a fiancé, or an ex-fiancé, by the way. Me and being engaged to a notable knight named yeah, Marco Yeah, that's good! <laughs> straight up right here! Marco, straight, there he is! Does this matter? Why do they tell us this story? I don't know, it deepens, like, as new as character. She was content with her existing life, but it came crashing down when she became afflicted with demon possession. She How? Was disowned by a Where? Where did the demon possession come from? How does she just, how does a normal girl just get affected like that? Because the other girls here, like Alpha and them, they all got like, experimented on, right? They were all being experimented on. Nui was just chilling, was just chilling, having a dance, and suddenly, boom, possession. How does that work? Huh? Does that imply that someone around her, you know, was actually sus? Is it Marco's fault? What's going on here? Family even declared dead by them, and later sold to the cult of Diablos because a human possessed. It's just genetic. It's just, it's just light dormant. Some people, it's, everybody might have it. That's how possession works. I thought. Possession was specific to like people that they were doing experimentation on, the Cult of Diablos were doing experimentation on. But everybody, it's just RNG. You can like have it or you can't. It's just fantasy cancer. So like anyone can have it. I thought this was like specific to specific, like a subset of people that was having experimentations done on them. But they all just can be cursed with possession. Okay. All right, all right whatever. This was extremely rare. Luckily, Zeta discovered Nicoletta's existence, so Shadow Garden intercepted and rescued her from the cult. Alpha would then cure her demon possession, but because human physiology was different from elves and Tyranthropes, she took almost 4 hours to completely cure her condition. And as usual, after learning the truth behind the cult, Nicoletta wanted revenge, so she decided to join Shadow Garden. Also, okay. it seems that being a human possessed caused her to have greater overall potential than the average Shadow Garden member. So Alpha placed Nicoletta under the care of Lambda to receive special training. What did you just say? Overall potential than the average. It seems like that being a human possessed has more potential. Have greater overall potential than the compared to what? The average Shadow Garden member. So oh, okay, okay. You you mean like the uh, uh, okay, okay. Like the unnamed numbers, you know, the, the six six whatever, blah blah blah, all, all those unnamed, you know, a human being possessed. Obviously, because it was possession, right? Anyone that has possession and gets cured, I think it's just stronger overall, right? So Alpha placed Nicoletta under the care of Lambda to receive special training. 
And because Alpha had planned on making Nicoletta a name number, she was given a temporary number of 93 and her actual mm. title was left unassigned until she Why temporary? She was ready. Nicoletta was able to easily finish her training because prior to her demon possession, she was already highly talented and skilled, being born from a family of dark knights. It was estimated that her overall strength why does she oh my goodness this is from the mobile game bro i i she was one of my first five stars i pulled but god damn what is that pose cameraman what is that look i mean this is very strategic angle even the way that she's looking down on you i think she's feeling a specific niche into a people that looks being looked down upon by by a pretty strong woman like this it's comparable to that of the seven shadows so with that she finally earned her title as new and it not only represented the great alphabet of 13, but also represented 13. the English word new because Shadow Garden literally She's gave new. her a second chance at the She's new, new life. But yeah. even though new has renounced her past, she still has some regrets about what her life could have been. Maybe oh. that's why when Rose joined them, new had helped the princess to overcome some of the trauma because she felt a kindred. I wanted to see those scenes. I didn't just get to see new and Oriana scene. The spirit in the princess. In any case, new wait, new clapped Rose after her joining Shadow Garden, but. Anime Room Pie was just like, you know, New felt very empathetic towards Oriana because she too was another human possessed and had to lose her, you know, her old life. And you're telling me, nah, she's like, welcome to Shadow Garden, bitch. Mm, get these hands. Overcome some of the trauma because she felt a kindred spirit in the princess. In any case, New was assigned to be. This Gamma fan art goes crazy, bro. The direct subordinate of Gamma, serving as her assistant and also personal bodyguard, so she mostly works in the Mitsugoshi company. New then first appeared in the anime when Gamma introduced her to Sid after he visited the Mitsugoshi company. She would be tasked by Gamma to help Sid search for the Shadow Garden imposters around the city. When Sid found them, he left one for New to interrogate, but because the imposter has been completely brainwashed by the cult, she wasn't able to extract any useful information. And so she kills in a really cool way. This is one of New's like, coolest moments. And it seems that after she finished the interrogation, she hanged the corpse of the imposter in public oh. as a warning to the cult, showing that under Oh, she doesn't fuck around. Her sweet demeanor, she's quite sadistic and cruel. I, yeah, I, I think that's what we can get from this picture, right? Like, li like look at this look. Like, she is the sadistic one. Oh sadistic my and god. Crew. Anyways, Neil then infiltrated the Midgar Academy as a student to deliver a report to Sid. And later when the cult attacked the school, she along with a large contingent of numbers led by Gamma were deployed to stop the cult and rescue the students. But the anti-magic barrier was preventing them from actually attacking, so Neil was sent to find clues in the lab of Sherry Barnett. There she would discover her ex fiance Marco, Marco Ranger Unconscious and Glenn, the vice commander of the Crimson Order. This guy straight up just died. Glenn just straight up died this like I'm like, what the fuck? Order dead while also bumping into Sid. She informed Sid about their plan, and after receiving new orders from him, she relayed it back to Gamma and waited for his signal. And apparently New had contemplated about killing Marco, but she decided to spare him in the end because of New thought about killing Marco? Why? Is that to Give mercy because he's dying right now, so it's better to just end him? Is that what the thought process is? Sid. When the anti-magic barrier was taken down, New and the Numbers fought the cult's forces alongside their master Shadow and they were easily defeated by Shadow Garden. With that, the incident at the Midgar Academy ended and apparently in the game Master of Garden, oh. New returned to the school afterwards to gather additional information where she encounters Sid again and it was implied that she not only respects him a lot, but she also has romantic feelings for him. Moving on. You got a fiance? What? Is the fiance engagement still there? I guess not. Does Marco even know New is alive? I actually don't know. Does Marco know the New is alive? New wanted to kill Marco because she was cautious if he figured that say that she. So she's willing to kill her old fiance to protect her new master's identity. Wow. In the manga, she wants to kill him because he may have heard of Shadow. That, I mean, Anime Roompa just told us, you know, she has feelings for Shadow now, romantic feelings, so I guess fuck the engagement, fuck the feelings. Oh, well, that really, that life ended the moment that Nui become possessed, right? Marco thinks that she's this, so I guess it makes sense for her to move on, but damn, that's her old fiance. I'm willing to kill this man for my new mess. <laughs> These hoes may be a little bit too loyal to Shadow. Jesus. What? Her family bought a lot of potions to erase her trace of magic. Everything is just a fake. Is that ever gonna... Is her identity coming to like light to Marco actually gonna be an important plot point? Probably not. I don't think so. News appearances afterwards were limited, but she did briefly appear when Sid needed a disc They do both. Gamma also looks sadistic at times. I think this is the Monday Man experimentation. Guys, for the Bushin Festival and during episode 20, she was tasked by Gamma to start buying land for their project. 
Her last known appearance would be during the Great Trail Alliance conflict where she briefly appeared to fight the- Hold the fuck up. What is that? Is this the mall? I just realized. This is Mitsugoshi. This is the mall. Look at the statue in the middle. This is the shades. This is Delta right here. This is probably Alpha, Beta, Epsilon, Gamma, uh, Eta, Zeta, a Shadow. <laughs> they, they straight up just have a fucking, they're just in broad daylight, bro. Shadow Garden is just in broad daylight. Like nobody's questioning this shit. Like, wait, doesn't that hooded man look a lot like the thing that try to blow up our city? Hold the fuck up. This is really, this is a nice touch though. This, sh this statue is a very nice touch. It looks, it looks nice the Great Trail Alliance conflict where she briefly appeared to fight the assassin sent by the major corporate alliance to steal documents from Mitsugoshi. She along with Gamma was able to easily eliminate the intruders and we got to see more on Neil's sadistic side with how she- What? I mean we got to see like I am Gamma, I am Atomic from Gamma but I wanted to see a new fight too. Dealt with them and for the rest- In fact all, all I remember is Kai and Omega helping out Gamma. New wasn't really there. New was with Alpha being like oh shit are we sure we should have let her go there? For the rest of this particular arc, Niu was simply in the background doing her usual job in Mitsugoshi. So with that said, Niu has shown to be quite skilled in combat, being able to swiftly eliminate her targets with extreme precision. Also thanks to her former life in the Marquez family, she is highly skilled at interrogation which really suits her sadistic personality and espionage. Being More espionage specialist like Alf Epsilon. Being able to seamlessly blend into the background and mask her presence. Additionally, Niu has great magic control, being able to maintain a slime bodysuit even in conditions where her mana is restricted or disrupted. Overall, Niu is definitely one of my favorite characters. Her sadistic side. I think Anime Roompa likes the. I think Anime Roompa is a little bit of an M. I think he wants to get whipped and stepped on by Niu. I don't. I don't. I don't blame him though. I don't blame him at all. It's the perfect juxtaposition to a typical innocent and calm demeanor, giving more character to her personality. And if you have seen some of her appearances in the Game Master Garden and her interactions with Sid, you definitely love her character even more. Are there some sadistic moments in Master of Garden? Is there an actual like a dominatrix scene? Master of Garden isn't one of those type of games, right? You, you know, there's some visual novel games where there's some sexy scenes, you know. But there's no new scene where she's literally just like spitting on you, calling you a pig and whipping you, right? That would be fucking insane if there was. New might actually be a contender for best waifu in the series, but what are your own personal really? thoughts on her? Feel free to- Really? New best waifu? Do you guys- Do you guys think that she has a contention for best waifu in the series? I think there's a lot of good girls in the show. I think New. She definitely had more screen time and presence in season one. She still does show up around Gamma and stuff, and she's always there as like the main assistant. Have I ever thought that she's the best girl? I don't know. Uh, she, there's nothing wrong with her. I just feel like nothing really like entices me of her. I guess I'm just not into the sadistic girls. I personally still love Oriana. I love Epsilon. Delta has been rising a lot in my rankings, actually. And I'm starting to realize like Delta is kind of like low key. My low key Delta might be the best shade. Straight up. Ever since the John Smith arc, I'm starting to realize Delta might be one of the best ones. Share answers down below. Oh, Epsilon! <laughs> Nothing happened there. One more time. One more time. No, no. Look at them hunkers. Down below. Why does Anime Roompai go into Epsilon's titty scene here as soon as he asks the question, is Niu one of the best girls? Oh my goodness. Nope. Nothing. Nothing happened. One of the few lines that we get from Kai and, uh, uh what's her name? O Omega and Kai? Fuck, fuck, fuck. Kai and Omega, yes. Now then, Kai and Omega are the last two name numbers in the series that we know of and they use very mysterious. I know fucking nothing of them. They're just like background characters that are always like doing something. They're always doing something to support the cast. I don't know anything about them. ...to be characters from the web novel but became canon thanks to the anime. Wait. Wait, 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 what? They used to be characters from the web novel. But, became but if they're in the web novel, I guess they're not canon? I thought web novel is the source material. Canon thanks to the anime. Became canon thanks to the anime implies that even if that thing was true in the web novel, it's not like actual, like, it, it, it is not the truth, you know, it's not the source content. I thought the web novel is the source content. I thought it's, it's always like web novel into light novel into manga and then into anime. Web novel is a fanfic. Oh, oh interesting, interesting. That's pretty cool that they made it into the anime like that then. Just like how in Konosuba, you know, the bald guy, the fucking... 
the potential actual demon lord, the bald dude from Konosuba, like he wasn't in the manga, he wasn't in the light novel. He's straight up just anime only. But then people loved him so much, he became canon. Strange. So regarding the both of them, their backstory is the same as every other member of Shadow Garden. Being abandoned once they became afflicted with demon possession, but were eventually rescued by the seven- This is such a simple, reusable formula. It's just, you know, again, fantasy cancer, right? It's just like, oh, these random girls just, you know, they, we, we gotta heal them up. And now they have a reason to like fight for us. It's so simple. It works for every fucking girl. There doesn't need to be any more deeper meaning or story. It's just like, you know, they were living their lives and oh no, possession. Oh, we healed the possession. Now their, their new lives are, you know, focused on defeating the cult of Diablos. It, it, it works really well. Join Shadows and joining the organization after learning the truth behind the cult. And during their time in the organization, they rose through the ranks to become name numbers because of their capabilities, earning the title of Kai, which represents the great letter 22. for 22, and oh. Omega, which represents the great. Did not, did not know these actually represent numbers 22 and 24. That's pretty respectable. But then again, if it's from 8 to 25, Omega is like straight up near at the very bottom, huh? They're actually quite low ranking. Well, does the numbers depict actual order of importance? I'd say so. They're not just tiers. They're, well, you know, obviously, like, number eight's going to be a lot more important than number 25. But interesting that Kai and Omega that we see a lot, they are, they don't reflect, they're just random number placement. They're just, everyone is just on the, no one knows. There's no order of importance. Not necessarily. Okay. Great letter for 24, respectively. And they were later assigned to be Epsilon's direct subordinates. Oh. Kai and Omega first appeared in the anime when they were sent to the Holy Land of Limworm to invest- Yeah, I saw them around, just like rowing boats and stuff. It's like, who the fuck are these girls? To get the Goddess Festival and the Mysterious Sanctuary. When Shadow defeated the Wish of Calamity Aurora, the gates to the Sanctuary had opened, so Kai and Omega soon arrived with the others. After taking Natsume, Kafka, and Archbishop Nelson hostage, they entered the Sanctuary Baldi. but became separated from Alpha and Delta when Nelson activated the Sanctuary's defenses. Regardless, Kai and Omega along with Epsilon simply continued to investigate and collect data about the Sanctuary. However, during their investigations, Kai and Omega had witnessed Tennessee. something forbidden when Epsilon's slime body suit malfunctioned because of the magic distortion in the Sanctuary. We haven't had this happen in a while and I'm hoping we get to at least see one of these. I mean, the reuse running gag, it might get old at times, but I still enjoy it. I hope this comes back. I think the next arc that we're going into is going to be like, Epsilon is going to be a little bit more pres uh, screen time, I think. Sanctuary. Luckily, they somehow lost their memories, so Epsilon did not murder them, and it was honestly such a hilarious scene. But moving on, the Sanctuary's defenses were destroyed thanks to the Delta, so having regrouped with Alpha and completed their investigations, they decided to leave. Outside, they were able to witness their master shadow destroying the Sanctuary and later, Epsilon, Kai, and Omega. Yeah, this scene right here. I, I noticed these two, two girls here and I'm like, what the fuck? Do we have new members of Shadow Garden? What's going on? This is before I understood like the whole hierarchy and the different organization of Shadow Garden. I reported their findings to Alpha before leaving Limworm. In any case, because of their limited screen time, I'm not sure about their overall powers and abilities, but it's safe to say that being a name number, we can expect their physical capabilities to be almost at the level of the Seven Shadows. Also being direct subordinates of Epsilon, they likely have very high magic proficiency as seen when they're able to perfectly manage their magic and maintain their slime bodysuit inside the sanctuary. Oh, and that is such a little detail that I would have just never... It, it just went over my head, but they did maintain it even though the sanctuary was like doing anti-magic. That said, their last appearance was in episode 20 of the anime where they were seen departing with Epsilon to the Oriana Kingdom to invest in Here we go! Here we go. Oh, yo, remember this shit? Lord Perv Asad. I thought he was the main bad dude, but no, he's actually reporting to someone that has Dio's voice actor. This guy is actually the main bad dude of cult. I guess if you look at him now, I never realized this. He has like knight armor on. You know, rounds, you know, the knights of the round table, right? So this is actually a member of the rounds. Maybe like a low ranking member, maybe a high ranking member. But. This is some endgame shit. This is, this is some stuff that was in season one. And I was like, oh shit, who the fuck is he talking to here? To get the cult's presence there. So hopefully we'll get to see more of them in the future. But for now, what are some of your opinions on Kai or Omega as characters? I would love to read them in the comments down below. But yeah, that was all the- That's another great video from Anime Room Pie. Please give them a like, a subscription if you'd like. Always give me extra context about Emerson Shadow cut novel, you know, light novel stuff that I don't know as an anime only. Do I want to know? Nope. Those are, nope. It's a rhetorical question when I ask for that kind of stuff. There's a lot more Emerson Shadow videos that we're going to watch from his content. So stay tuned for that. By the way, we do these reactions live on stream 7 a.m. PST on YouTube and Twitch. Hope to see you there.